Victor Cruz has a chip on his shoulder. We'll get into that a little bit as well. He is mm. known for the salsa. Yes. Well, this is a chip. Not sure now. we're going to see much of that this Serious year. Serious business on, on the wow. chip. Wow, you took it there. Now a early, right? Still, is there a chance? No, I wouldn't listen. If I was trying to get a job, I wouldn't be saying what he's saying right now. No, absolutely not. All right. Well, since absolutely since you, since you mentioned it, because you know how your friends with different players. Yeah, you don't think those general managers, what? front office owners, people? are friends with other owners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, and we'll get into Odell, who's going to talk to the media today. He's supposed to be at OTAs, and we now know why he hasn't been at OTAs. Several reasons: one being Johnny Manziel, the other one. Iggy Azalea. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's another reason there. So, mm. page six had that one. Uh, but Victor Cruz uh, was on uh, 105 of uh, The Breakfast Club a couple of days ago. Yep. And uh, said that he suggesting the Giants were actually trying to suppress his production because they didn't want to pay him. He said, I felt it all year long. Halfway through the year, I'm balling. The other half, I'm not getting the ball. And you're just like, what's going on? Balling like, is a slight exaggeration, right? It was like, okay, I see what's happening. They don't want me here anymore. He said, a lot of people probably don't know this. Stop it. Let's say I played well. I was a 1,000-yard receiver last year. It would have been more difficult from a fan perspective to cut me. Yeah. First of all, he was playing out of position. Second of all, he wasn't the same Victor Cruz. No. And also, there were games where Sterling Shepard didn't see the ball. That's true. There was a lot of issues with, with – remember – and Odell was complaining about not getting targeted early on as well. I'm telling you, man, go back to that Minnesota Vikings game. It started there. When when Eli was under duress the entire game, yeah. that was the point where he was like, you know what, I don't trust my offensive line. Yes. I don't necessarily trust my running backs. I don't trust my tight ends. Like, you didn't have great blocking tight ends either. And that's why you have Red Ellison down. Yeah. yeah. No, you're <laughs> absolutely right. Eli, Eli doesn't have a whole lot of time, and Victor Cruz wasn't creating a whole lot no. of separation last year. He's just not the same player that he was before the injury he had with the knee in 2014. But see, see, that's He's just exactly, not that guy. That's exactly why you get a guy like Brandon Marshall. Yeah. Because you know what his size, even if you don't have time, you throw it in his direction. 50-50 chance, at least 50-50 chance, he's going to either catch the ball or it's not going to get intercepted. No, you're absolutely right. You need a big body receiver that's outside of the numbers that can create that kind of separation off of the jams and the reroutes from those defensive backs. He fills a need, and that's what they did. They got the guy outside the numbers in Brandon Marshall. They went out in the first round this past year and got Evan Ingram, the guy inside the numbers, to be that big body target because Sterling Shepard, although he's great in the slot, he's just not a big guy in stature. So you need that guy that can make those contested catches over the middle. you got to have it. Now, Cruz goes on to say it's hard to believe that they purposely tried, uh, you know, they told Eli, don't throw it to Cruz, right? He said that, but he said when you look at the film and look at how it goes down, it's the only way. I mean, you had Odell Beckham and you had Sterling Shepard. So you had other options. You had other guys that were going to be the primary targets in that offense. And Vic, you're just not the same guy. He's just not. Most guys that have that patella injury, they don't come back as the same guy that they were before that. And so much of his game was based on quickness and speed. Mm -hmm. He's not able to create, create that separation because he doesn't have that same burst anymore. So, I mean, I understand Victor Cruz, wanting, you know, the story of Victor Cruz and being from Patterson and being a part of the New York Giants as an undrafted free agent. I, I understand the attachment, the affinity that he might have to, for the organization and wanting to be a part of that still, even though they released him. But you can't have sour grapes. Not, not after the organization has done everything that it could to do right by you. They gave you 2015. That was a gift. They gave you 2015 as you were trying to bounce back from that knee injury. So just try to keep it in perspective because they didn't have to give you 2016. They didn't. How much does this affect him around the league? I mean, how much does this affect him of getting another job? The B, to me, saying something like this publicly, I, don't, I can't imagine how this helps you, especially when after his career is over, the franchise he will be associated to is the Giants. Yeah. But saying something like this – I mean, I, I don't know you gotta how be, you can you gotta be this careful. as a front office. you got to be careful because business at some level is always personal. And I'm not saying Victor Cruz shouldn't feel some kind of way about what happened with him and the Giants parting ways this offseason. But it's about timing, tact, and tone.